prayers of Cheryl and Shelley, dear Lord. Lord, that touch all the people, dear Lord, that we've been praying about today, Heavenly Father. Give us strength to continue on and to go towards the weekend and next week and beyond. Have mercy, dear Lord. So much is happening. Have mercy, dear Lord. It's only you can have mercy. Anoint us one more time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon. We're back again. It's another week. And we're coming to you again from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. We're still there, still uh, chugging along and joining God's word. Hallelujah. We are this week coming from the 22nd chapter, chapter 22, verses 23 through 30. And then we're going to trot over into the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 5. Ooh, got a lot to go on, so we're going to get ready to jump in and get going. This is the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, in Greek, it is praxis, praxis, the exemplary acts of extraordinary men of God. Ooh, couldn't you imagine being, during, being alive during those times? I mean, I'm glad we're alive now, but just think about what those people went through for the cause of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we are now in the 22nd chapter. Last week we ended on verse 23. Then as they cried out and tore off their clothes and they threw dust in the air. And that's where we left off that Paul has been arrested. Paul has been maligned. He has been tortured. He's been ridiculed. And a lot of people will say, well, why are you preaching this particular part? You can go on to another exciting part. All of God's word is for truth and for correction. All of God's word. There's something you can learn in all of God's word. In fact, the subject for the night's message comes from 23.1, chapter 23, verse 1, the B part of the verse. Live in all good conscience before God. And that's what we should do every day of our lives. Try our best to live, a, live good in our consciousness before God Almighty. Because God is the one that's going to judge you. I can't do anything to you. No other human being can do anything to you. It's God Almighty. So live in a good conscience before God. Be of good conscience around your fellow men, fellow women. Just say every day, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to be my best. I'm going to go forward the best I can amongst my fellow uh, men and women, uh, uh, brethren on this earth, and in, in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name and the power of the Holy Ghost. So now, verse 24. The commander ordered him to be brought to the barracks and said that he should be examined, listen at this, under scourging, so that he might know why they shouted so against him. When we say scourging, it is a way of uh, punishment inflicted on a human being by a magistrate or by a soldier or by what we would call today a henchman. It would be somebody scourging somebody else. We're going to talk about scourging in a moment. Um, but here, Paul has gone through so much. Here it is. If you were faced with the same things Paul was faced with, would you be able to stand? Would you be able to still walk for Jesus? Would you still be able to tell somebody who Jesus is? And let me tell you something. The way things are getting in this country now, where if somebody doesn't like you, they can and cancel you. Don't you realize we're just a few steps away from the stuff that the Apostle Paul was going for? We're so inundated and so uplifted in these churches, we don't think that stuff can happen. Brothers and sisters, it can happen. They showed you through the pandemic that they have the power to shut churches down. And some churches got shut down. Oh, but my brothers and my sisters, would you be able to go through the stuff that the Apostle Paul went through for Jesus Christ. Don't you realize that from chapter 20 to 28, Paul was kidnapped, he was beaten, he was threatened, he was arrested. Oh 
oh my God, could you go through the rest? Some of us will say, oh, I don't want to be arrested. I don't want everybody in the community to look at what a wonderful, great person I was. Well, Paul was arrested, interrogated, ridiculed, ignored, shipwrecked, and bitten by a viper. Don't you know in some countries that are communistic, some countries that are godless, some countries that don't care nothing about who Jesus is, don't you know they're doing their, they're, they're, they're torturing Christians now? You have Christians that are being martyred for the cause of Christ now? And we can sit in these churches and act like ain't nothing going on. I got a little news for you. And you can get mad at me, you can go out and, and cancel me through whatever you want to do, but here it is. We need to, in the, in the body of Christ, we need to stop being snot, snotting those people, snots before each other. You got some people that are in church of God in Christ. They don't want to mix with nobody else. You got people in the Baptist church. And I'm Baptist. I was born Baptist that don't want to mix with anybody else. You got people in United Homeless that don't want to mix with nobody else. You got people in uh, Methodist that don't want to mix with nobody else. You got people in the Foursquare that don't want to mix with nobody else. You got people in the Assembly of God that don't want to mix with northern denominations. You got people that in, in, in these different groups, interdenominational, non-denominational churches that don't want to mix with nobody else. And I've said this before in my messages, but guess what? Sinner people that are walking around in the earth, sinner people driving by, people that don't know, know nothing about those denominations, do you know what? They're driving by and they don't know nothing about all that. All they know is that's a church and they don't like what's going on in the church or they don't like Jesus, they don't like God, they don't like the Bible, they don't like this, they don't like that. They don't know nothing about those denominational things that are going on. We need to stop that. We need to stop knocking some of these walls down and start saying, I'm going to get together with my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and get the message of Christ out before it's everlasting too late. Hallelujah today. Y'all almost got me taken off. Y'all almost got me taken off. Got me running, ready to take off. But I just have to get that message in. Paul went through a lot, but he still stood for Christ no matter what. The book of Acts, the 20th chapter, just a few pages over, verse, I believe, 23. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. Who told him this? Who allowed us? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And when you have the Holy Ghost, the part of who and what you are for Christ, you can no matter what, what people say, you can stand, even if they say we're going to shut that church down, you can stand when people say, I don't care nothing about no church whatsoever, I don't care nothing about God, even when people are blasphemous now. You got people saying, I don't, want, I don't want to even know nothing about no God. You need to pray for those people, because there's, if they don't find out who Jesus is, if they don't accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior and get saved, they're going to be lost forever and ever. And ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. We need to get people saved. That's what we're supposed to be doing. In Acts, the 21st chapter, I believe it is, just another page or two over, verse 13, Paul then answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of Jesus Christ. He was ready to die for the cause of Christ. How many people do you know today would be ready to die for the cause of Christ? If I busted into some of these so-called holy churches this weekend and I said, I'm going to put a gun in your head, are you going to accept Jesus? A whole lot of people would run because they don't want to give up the things of this world. They don't want to give up this life. But Paul was ready to die for the cause of Christ. And that spirit is on its way to America. Brothers and sisters, you need to pray for the church. Lift up the church before the living Lord of the universe. Lift up holy hands for the church in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. You got people coming up with all types of mindsets that are ungodly and wrong. You need to pray for those people in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So verse 25. And as they bound with him, 
with thongs, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, is it lawful for you to scorch a man who is Roman and uncondemned? What they were doing was foul. What they were doing was illegal. What they were doing was wrong. But when you got people with that type of mindset, they don't mind trying to destroy you. And they'll destroy you if you're not careful. If you don't have the Holy Ghost inside of who and what you are. That's what I was saying earlier. A whole lot of people, if they were placed in, in a situation that was dangerous, they'd run away. They don't have any Holy Ghost in them. Hallelujah. I remember when we started back on uh, live services this year, first Sunday in April, Easter Sunday, there were people that talked about me. I had people criticize me, but I was going to stand for Jesus. I was going to follow the rules of the protocol, but I was going to stand for Jesus. I never did close down the church for prayer. Even if I was by myself, I still came here every day and prayed. Man ought to always pray and not faint and not dissipate and not become a shrinking body. Man ought to always pray and not Thing. Hallelujah. He's a Roman and uncondemned. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the commander, saying, Take care what you do for this man. Now, back to the scourging. When, when, when these people were scourged, scourging was something that the Romans were very adept at. They had a whole schematic process that they did. One of the, one of the scourges that they had, they would take a wooden a, a, a strap with a wooden handle on it. And they would arrange your body in such a way where they could lay seven stripes on one side of your body. They said they were death pain. And then on the other side, seven more. So you would have 14 stripes ripped on them. Now, sometimes they would use just regular leather. Sometimes they would use some that had pieces of bones wrapped on them. And then sometimes they would use some with metal balls. And if they really wanted to make a point, they would make one that had all three. But they were adept. So, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. The seventh one would lay right over the top of the buttocks. Then they would go to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh one over the top of the buttocks. And if they really wanted to make a point, they would leave the wounds open for some time, which means infection could set in. And I know what I'm saying is not popular because I'm not telling you how to feel good about yourself. I'm not telling you how you can go and somewhere and go to your next destiny and make some more money. You need to be saved. You need to understand what we're up against in this cold and cruel world in which we live in today. And that's what we must be strong, full of the Holy Ghost for the Lord. If we're going to make it, if we're going to make it. Verse 27, then the commander came and said to him, tell me, are you a Roman? And he said, yes, I am. The commander answered, with a large sum I obtained his citizenship. And Paul said, but I was born a citizen. See, they were trying to get him on a technicality. But Paul said, wait a minute, I was born a citizen. Just like I was born here in America. I was born in San Francisco, California. I have rights as an American citizen. But there are people that want to take our national, natural rights away from us because they don't care about their fellow human beings and they certainly don't care about God. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Then immediately, verse 29, those who were about to examine him withdrew from him and the commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. 
verse 30, the next day, because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the Jews, he was released from his bonds and commanded the chief priests and all the council to appear and brought Paul down and set them before him. When we say chief priest in the Hebrew, the uh, Kohen Haggadol, and I've talked to you about them before. When he walked, that whole song by Ludacris, when he moved, you moved, just like that, when you move, you move. When he moved, everybody moved, because he was the big shot in charge. All of us in here, all of you that are above a certain age should know who, who the big shot is. If there's somebody in the, in, the, in the room that's the big shot, they're the one that's in charge. That's what the high priest, the Kohen Agadol, and everybody else that says the council, they were commanded by the chief priest and the council appeared before Paul and they said before him. Now we're in the 23rd chapter. Then Paul, looking earnestly at the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And that's what we are to do. We are to live in good conscience before the Lord. How can you live in good conscience in these times in which we live in? My brothers and sisters, one way is that you've got to be full of the fire and the Holy Ghost. I know many people don't think that's popular today, but if you're going to survive all and all, because to survive all, you've got to be full of the fire and the Holy Ghost. 1 Peter 1.16, we're commanded to be ye holy, for I am holy. We serve a holy God. We serve a supernatural God. And if you serve him the way we're supposed to serve him, then you can go back to the first verse again and live in all good conscience before God. No matter what you're up against, live in a good conscience before God. You can do it under the power of the Holy Ghost. When you want to act bad, when you want to act up, when that old sin nature gets inside of who you are, go somewhere and pray and pray for the more of the infilling and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in your life to keep you to live in good conscience in these times in which we live in. Verse 2, and the high priest, again the Kohen Abaddon, Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him in the mouth. If you understand that, they were evil, wicked people. They know Paul was a was a Roman citizen. They know that he'd been uncharged, but there they were commanding that you hit him in the mouth. You got people today that will hit you in the mouth. You got people that will tear your character up. You got people that will lie on you to the point where people will not speak to you. There are people right here in this town that will not speak to me because there's a certain preacher that talks about me like a dog behind my back and he's done it for years. But you know what? All I can do is give him to the Lord because the Bible says, God's word says, be not deceived for God is not mocked for that what a man soweth, that also shall and reap. His time is coming. Give him to the Lord. The Lord will deal with him. He knows who he is. I'm just going to give him to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed walls, for you sit to judge me according to the law, and you do not command me to be stuck contrary to the law. And verse 4, and those who stood by him, do you revive God's high priest? Then Paul said, I do not know, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, ye shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. What he did in verse 5, he quoted from Leviticus and Exodus to them, brothers and sisters, continue to live before God in, with a good conscience in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we pray. We're going to end on 2 Corinthians 4, beginning with verse 7. For we have treasure in this earth and vessels, that excellence of power may be of God and not of us. We are, here it is in verse 8, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed, that we are perplexed, 
but not despair. Verse 9, persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Verse 10, always carrying about in the body of dying in the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Here it is, verse 10. For we live and are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, and that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our own flesh as I go to my seat. My brothers and sisters, live your life in all good conscience before the Lord. Don't matter what people say to you. Don't matter how they talk about you. Don't matter how they curse on you. You go ahead and live your life for Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that died on that cross but rose on the third day morning with all power in his hands. All, all, all power in his hands. 